What's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's good to see all your familiar faces. Hope you've been well in these trying times. Today, we make another pit stop on the road to find the lamb sauce. We've already covered how to make a bechamel, a velouté, as well as a tomato sauce. If you haven't seen those already, I'll leave a link in the description or in the comments or in a title card, I think over here or over here. I'm not entirely sure which one, but it'll be somewhere up there. Alternatively, you can just check it out by browsing the rest of the channel. Today's sauce has some similarities to the aforementioned sauces, as you'll see in a bit, and is commonly served with red meats. Before we dive in, a quick note to say that we'll be using store-bought stock, and as such, we'll be bolstering the flavors using other ingredients. So with that out of the way, let's make some Espanol sauce. <laughs> What you'll need for this sauce is an onion, a carrot, half a celery stick, tomato puree, flour, garlic, butter, beef stock, some thyme, parsley, and a bay leaf. Also, while optional, we'll be using some mushrooms and bacon. All the exact quantities can be found in the description as usual. Begin by prepping your vegetables. It always helps to have everything on hand once you begin cooking. Basically, peel everything that needs peeling and roughly chop them into small pieces about as large as what you see on screen. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to lump the mushrooms under the same category as the rest of the vegetables, because it's basically not meat. You also want to chop up your bacon into smaller bits. Once that's done, let's begin cooking. Place a pot over medium to high heat, pour in some oil and begin cooking your mushrooms. Give them a tiny pinch of salt and pepper just to help them release a bit more moisture. I must emphasize that you should avoid using too much salt as the bacon and stock are both already salty. Also, I'm starting with the mushrooms as I don't want the rest of the ingredients to boil in the released water. Once your mushrooms have shrunk in size and gained some color, remove them from the pan. Toss in your bacon and cook them for about 5-7 to seven minutes, stirring occasionally to prevent sticking. What we want here is to render out the fat. Once that's done, toss in the butter along with the rest of the vegetables and sweat them off for about 5-7 to seven minutes as well, or until translucent with a bit of colour. Toss in your mushrooms and let the ingredients mingle for about 3 minutes. Toss in your garlic and cook them off for about 30 seconds. With all the vegetables sorted, it's time for the tomato puree to join the party. Mix it in well with everything and cook it out for about a minute. Finally, Pour in the flour and mix everything until there are no visible white specks. Cook out the raw flavour of the flour for about 2-3 minutes and remove the vegetable paste off the heat. I removed mine out of the pan because spreading it on a tray would cool it quicker. And also, a Dutch oven retains heat really well, which will only slow down the cooling process. Why are we cooling things off? Because things were getting a bit too hot and steamy and I think it's about time for a timeout. Are you using your timeout? Okay, timeout? Why not get a timeout? Hey, I didn't invent the rules. What rules? Jokes aside, it's because, as mentioned in previous videos, we only add hot stock to a cold roux and vice versa in order to avoid lumps. Which brings us to our next step, which is to bring the stock up to a boil. Once your roux has cooled down to slightly above room temperature, slowly add in your stock a bit at a time and give everything a mix. If you transferred your roux to another tray just like me, use some of the stock to deglaze it as well because every bit of flavour counts. Toss in your herbs and bring everything to a boil. Reduce it to a simmer and let it cook out for about 45 minutes or until reduced by half. If you feel like everything is reducing too quickly, you can add more water. Also, some impurities may float to the top in the form of some foam. Feel free to skim that off if you're fussy about it. Finally, strain your sauce and taste for seasoning. Add more salt and pepper if required, check to make sure the sauce coats the back of a spoon just like this, and you are pretty much done. And there you have it, how to make a classical brown sauce. On its own, it's already super delicious and will pair nicely with most red meats. If you want to further tweak or bolster its flavour, you can experiment using other herbs such as rosemary, 
thyme, sage, maybe even cardamom, cumin, more black pepper, stuff of that nature. It all depends on what you're serving it with and what other herbs pair well with that kind of meat. It's also a key ingredient when it comes to making demi glace or demi glaze, but that's for another video because that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, remember to hit that like button, share the video with all your friends and family, and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, let me know in the comments down below which dishes or meats you think this sauce would go really well with, or just drop me a comment because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.